Uh, this case is case 15. So this is another bisodermic differential, even in low power. Yeah, very of cells in the dermis. Yes. Really busy. So I think in higher power, we can see these cells, spindle shape, more like fibroblast, and then some washout space, maybe using. So good. It could be Sigillomycetiva or NSF, as we discussed in the previous slide. Good. Yeah, it's hard to tell. It's a faded slide here. So there's space, like you said, between all, definitely way too many fibroblasts. And to me, this, you know, you could get this and you might think this looks like a punch biopsy of a spindle cell neoplasm, right? I mean, I'm a, I'm a soft tissue pathologist. And if you just showed me this and didn't give me any history, uh, my first thought is I see a dermis filled with spindle cells. I'm going to think, I wonder what kind of spindle cell neoplasm this might be. So I feel like it's, it's, I don't feel like it's always taught that way, but I think both sclerodema and NSF, if you just look at the slide with no clinical information and you're not in the middle of a metabolic disease lecture like we are now, uh, they often make my mind think of a spindle cell tumor. So I don't know, maybe maybe it's just me, but I think that's a useful thing to keep in mind. If, if maybe your your brain works like mine, uh, if you're out there, uh, if you get these confused with spindle cell neoplasm at first glance, uh, you're not alone. So I think we have a mucin slide, perhaps, maybe not. Let's see. Nope. But if you stained this with a colloidal iron or alcium blue, it would, all this stuff in between would light up as looking bluish and having mucin here. And so this case, uh, per the, the answer sheet, is a case of NSF, nephrogenic systemic fibrosis, or what's the other name for it? It's fibrosing, uh, fibrosing systemic dermopathy. Hold on. I can't even keep these things. I'm going to leave this in. So if you're out there and you have to Google sometimes to remember the alternate name of esoteric entities, well, I do it too. So, uh, because, you know, I want to make sure I don't get the thing wrong. So, um, nephrogenic systemic fibrosis, or the other name was nephrogenic fibrosing dermopathy. Uh, I think NSF is the current name that, that's used. So this is the one we were talking about this earlier in the section on uh, sclerodema that the appearance here can look, uh, to my eye, essentially identical to sclerodema. The difference is clinical history, knowing that the patient has uh, renal failure and was administered a gadolinium contrast agent and has other uh, systemic um, uh, or other um, symptoms that would come along with this. They're often, uh, I believe, have a joint uh, joint um, uh, involvement and can have some synovial. Uh, involvement and joint flexibility uh, issues and other things. So I don't think I've ever diagnosed the case of this in real life because now that this entity is recognized, it's become vanishingly rare because when people have um, uh, renal function that is that is uh, not good enough to receive gadolinium, they're not given the contrast agent. And again, I don't know the exact specifics of when you can and can't give contrast uh, uh, MRI gadolinium contrast to patients. So I'll have to let uh, my radiology and uh, and uh, nephrology colleagues out there chime in on that. So, uh, and Li Ping, like you said, um, uh, the only I wasn't aware of uh, how you can tell these apart without the history, but I know that you mentioned that, that this tends to uh, sometimes go deeper in the dermis than sclerodema, edema, and this case would seem to support that. This goes way down, all the way down. It looks like where subcutis should be, it's replaced by these plump fibroblastic cells and intervening um, a collagen and a mucin or myxoid change. So uh, a, a good dramatic example, a little bit faded, but, but an example of something that's very rare nowadays. Okay. 